Real Life Street Stars. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> Unscathed. Unscathed in uh, 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 Pretty Boy Floyd, I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Tom Brady. Yeah, I got Tom Yeah, 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 yeah. Tom Brady. Sack me like a mother. God. Man, yeah, let's, yeah. man, let's go and get into it, man. It's crazy because, uh, you know, real life, man, we, um, we said, man, Charleston is a guy who we normally bring... For the last three years, we started the end of the year off with a Charles White interview, and um, we said, "All right, let's try to figure out how to get him back in for you know January first, December thirty first, something like that, New Year's Eve." And then this shit happened. And then this shit happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this shit. So we, man, let's go and get right into it, man, because you know it's funny. You you had said um, you was gonna go live, talk about it, um, and thank you for thank you first and foremost for being able to come to this platform first to even get his story. Uh, we want to give you flowers now. Uh, hit the, hit the flower angle on them niggas. <laughs> Boom! We want to give you flowers now, boy. <laughs> don't throw them. I'm about to say hand them to me. Don't throw them at me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't throw them. Shit, goddamn it. But we want to give you flowers now, man. Um, and uh, just actually ask you, man. Um, first of all, uh. That's been the first time a nigga's put his hands on you on camera, at least by physically touching you out of everything you said. Uh, yeah. So let's talk uh, about it, man. We, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, let, let's run through that, man. Uh, what I would love to do is, uh, this is Crockett, Texas, uh, for those that don't know, um, in the, you know, between Dallas, Fort Worth, and Houston, uh, right there in the middle, um, you know, technically middle ground. Uh, if you can, see Dub, tell us how this show came about, bro. And um, what was your thought process going into it? You know, because I believe it's just you, Big Do, and 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 Ant, and Do mm -hmm. Tell us your thought process going into this show, man. And uh, we gonna we gonna walk, we gonna dissect this thing. Uh, fitted fitted hat fitted hat cowboys is is uh, uh they're like a trail ride group group, you know. Uh, you know, trail ride guys, they, they got their own lane, their own world, uh, and, and them niggas got plenty of money. Uh, the trail ride niggas is, 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 is where the rappers is trying to be. That's facts. Uh, so, you know, uh, so one of the promoters is from Crockett, but he lived here in Dallas. Uh, so so uh, he and I is doing a lot of, uh, a lot of promotion ventures together, uh, a lot of concerts and events. So he, he booked me. He booked me, very professional, uh, professional brother, uh, very detail oriented. Uh, so you know, he, he, I was real comfortable in, in doing business with him. Uh, this show was booked for how long outside of today? Like a few it's months? been like two months. Okay. So 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 this is an annual event that they do uh, once a year. So this is called the annual uh, Fitted Hat Cowboys Christmas. You know, so it's an annual event that they do. Uh, tickets go. Tickets went on sale. Uh, like pretty much uh, early on. Yeah. Okay. Sold out. Seven hundred. A uh, VIP section sold out. Uh, I'm thinking Crockett, Texas, right up the road. Uh, shit. Come on, homie. Let's go. I would go by myself. Uh, I went to comedy show by myself. Uh, with no security, no nothing. Yeah, so we, we spoke to Dewberry, and we asked normally who is normally with you on these comedy venues, even on a TK Kirk and stuff. Like uh, either me or Dewberry. Okay. Yeah, me and Dewberry. Uh. So uh, now, nah, homie, uh, nigga, I ain't I ain't got no concern. Uh. But I'm more lax. You know what I'm saying? I I ain't, I ain't as tactical as I was a year ago. Uh, because of the money a nigga making. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm real soft and weak uh, on my on, on my tactics, homie. Uh, because a nigga having fun with this shit, and and and, and, and I don't I don't get threatened in real life. Uh, it's been love at the shows. Yeah, it, it's it's been love in, in in real life. My. Mm, Oh, I had a revolution mind before I got into entertainment. So I was a revolutionary minded nigga. So I talk revolution. Uh, uh, I talk revolution war talk. Uh, now, nigga, uh, I'm having fun like an entertainer. So 
And, and some would say I sold out. Uh, this what a nigga want to sell out for. Uh, waking up doing what he want to do every day. Having fun when he want to have fun. So, so nigga, uh, so my thing is, come on, dude, let's go, man. We got a comedy show. We just going right up the road. Uh, so, nigga, it, it wasn't no concern. We get there. Uh, I'm assessing a situation. Okay, it's trail ride. Uh, this is a grown folks crowd. Uh, the the show, all the hotels are sold out in the town. So these are grown folks coming, homie. So for them niggas to be sitting in there with that the, the basketball jerseys on, uh, they stood out to me anyway, mm -hmm. off the top. Did so, you assess the crowd prior? Uh, uh, uh. Uh, they sat in the middle, so they stood out. Uh. Yeah, I don't, I, 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 I don't know why them niggas were there. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why them niggas were there. I mean, them niggas there with them, them, with them twelve hundred dollar boots. Uh, now this was a high dollar elite, elite extravagant event for for black people in the in the trail ride world, homie. Uh, so them niggas ruined a, a magnificent night. Uh, I left my gun at home. I didn't take no mace. Uh, I bought a knife when I was down there, uh, but. We ain't had no weapons on. We were just going to go do a show and then come right back. So in your mind, knowing who you are, the notoriety you have, yeah, you was feeling comfortable in this scenario. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've been feeling comfortable lately. So I'm telling you, I've been, I've been, I've been laxed. Uh, I had a show in Fort Lauderdale last weekend, homie. Uh, I went without Dewberry, no security. No weapons. People say that's crazy. Uh, it's actually not crazy because <laughs> he's a regular person doing his job. Like you should be able to go places and do things as a normal individual. Like it ain't, it ain't too far fetched. Uh, uh, George Zimmerman is right. <laughs> Living his motherfucking life everywhere he go. Uh, so so yeah, now nah, homie. So uh, the show before that. Uh, in, in Sykes, in Missouri, it was a similar situation where I got into it with some guys that was heckling in the crowd, and it turned ugly like this. It just didn't get physical. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It, it, so uh, I just didn't got too comfortable. So as you said, you know, we we, we peeped your life, and you kind of gave us a rundown. Um, uh, you you have a set. I'm assuming there's some people that goes on before you. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 for the most part, home. I've been, the, I've been the headlining act. So everybody going before me. And these guys in the crowd, as you stated, um, or someone, I don't know who it was, but they screaming mob ties. That's another guy. That's another guy. So that wasn't even the, that wasn't even Kobe Bryant. No, nah, that wasn't Kobe Bryant and Lamar Odom. Uh, the the the. Uh, <laughs> The the nigga that was screaming mob tie was a was a washed up old nigga who probably don't even know Jay Prince. Probably don't even know Jay Prince. He had the mob ties. And it's him, his buddy, and his buddy's girl. So of course I'm gonna go in and say, oh nigga, y'all doubled, y'all triple dating, you ain't got no woman. You done paid to come see me to holler mob tie, nigga. You probably ain't even got no woman. So I shamed him. And then when he stood up, he had on a rhinestone belt. Oh shit. <laughs> 2003. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, and and I'm saying these are black men at least in their 40s, their 30s. How the nigga you on Jane Print Dick, you how the mob tie, nigga? Nigga, let me tell you how weak mob ties is. There's no such thing as a mob ties. It's a fictitious name. They're not a mob. Uh mob ties is like uh, the white boy from Malibu most wanted. Jay Prince Jr. and his son, you know, they 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 them they like the Malibu from most wanted. Homie. They're not no real gangsters. Uh they're nothing like the Italian mafias like we've been seeing in the movies. So why? Who gives a fuck about a mob tie? So I'm ignoring the nigga, but he's steady saying it on stage. While I'm on stage. So nigga, I holler, nigga, fuck mob tie. Nigga, I done said fuck this. Nigga, you niggas ain't. So I got these two dudes saying, take your mask off. 
Talk right. Uh, y'all together? Uh, no, nah, this is my. This, this. <laughs> <laughs> so he hollered, no, nah, this is my nephew. But he got his arm like this while he, while he talking. So I'm saying, you two niggas been paid to come see me? To, to do all this? With no woman? Oh, man, you didn't go fuck each other tonight. So the woman comes sit in his lap and say, oh, no, this is my woman. This is my man. So I say, hey, sister, uh, you might need to watch nephew and up. I'm putting that dick on nephew where he got his arm around. So I said, man, that nigga got mad. And that when he stood up, yeah, nigga, you better shut num, 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 num. So when he did that, I'm steady talking. Yeah, Kobe Bryant, Jersey wearing that, nigga Michael Jordan. T-. Then he proceeds toward the stage. Mm. Uh, now it's threatening because why would you be proceeding toward the stage? And you're making threats, saying you would knock me out and what you would do to me. And so uh, I had a decision to make. I had to weigh my cost and I had to weigh my benefits. Well, what's the cost? Uh, man, you get your ass kicked, you can get hurt, these people could be upset. Uh, what's the benefit? Uh, you can ruin this comedy show and go viral and be another viral sensation for another six months because of this. Well, what about Dewberry? Dewberry just jumped off the stage. Oh, he'll be all right. I had to think quickly, so I had to make. So I had to make a split decision because in my mind, this nigga standing up talking shit like he want to do something to me. Boy, this could be a perfect opportunity to conquer the internet and go viral. So wait, wait. Why was there a flower pot on stage in the first goddamn It was, it was Christmas decoration. I told you it was an annual. <laughs> this isn't something. This So just think, Crockett is not a big town, homie. So Thanks. something that they, something that'll bring out 700 people in a small town is big. Mm-hmm. So this is an annual event. And trail riding is big in Texas. Mm-hmm. Extreme. This bigger than hip hop. That is facts. So this the trail ride community, homie. So, uh... Nigga, they wasn't just dressed up in hot dollar, homie. This thing was elaborate and, and elegant, homie. This this wasn't just no. So if you see the camera view, homie, you see this. It was it was shit set up around the stages. Uh, they had really decorated this. This, this was really a theme. Uh, they had they had best dress, homie. So this was a real. Uh, so in, in my mind, uh, uh, I get to take advantage of a situation and capitalize on it. You had got paid the back and up front. Yeah. It was on you. The money's on you. Yeah. You proceed to pull it out to let a nigga know you ain't getting no real money. Uh, nah. I let them niggas know that because in my mind, I'm saying they letting them disrupt class. Just like the teacher tells them, well, y'all get it out. I get my paycheck regardless. <laughs> so I'm letting them know, nigga, even though y'all doing this, nigga, bitch, ass nigga, I got the money regardless. So now the nephew starting to say, boo. So I'm saying, nigga, I don't give a damn about you two nigga booing. Because now it's been it's us three. It ain't about to cry out no more. So nobody's saying, say, man, y'all chill and sit down. So at this point, I don't give a damn about the show no more. Because in my mind, as a professional, somebody's supposed to remove them, not me. The flower- I'm supposed to stop the show. Say, can y'all get them out? I could have done that, but why do that? Why not control the situation and take advantage of it and That's make right. it and make it work for me? So the flower pot itself, where is that? At? Is, it, is it just on a? They were all lined up on the whole stage. Okay. So they Christmas decoration. So yeah. if you see the flower pot, it's a Christmas decoration. So they were using whatever Christmas colors throughout this whole building. So everything was decorated. In the art of war, <laughs> grabbing that flower pot, you that hey, everything's fair game. Uh, uh, when somebody's trying to hurt you, nigga, or somebody's pretending they gonna hurt you, anything's fair game. They kids, they mama, okay, they dog. You trying to hurt me, right? Yeah. And you, yeah, your mama fair game, nigga. Mm. So you actually chunk 
do better. Your like kid, you said. Your kids for a game, nigga, if you That's try facts. to hurt me. That's facts. Your little born baby, your innocent baby, we know your baby in that house, we still shoot it up. That's for a game when you're trying to hurt me. The young man, uh, Kobe Bryant, um, were you looking at his? Were you looking at him in the eyes as this was going? As he was, yeah. But did you did you sense a threat? Yeah. From him, like, oh, uh, I, I don't have to sense a threat once you say a threat. I don't have to sense it. You saying a threat? That's facts. That's right. If you saying what you're gonna do to somebody, uh, they teach us in the license to carry class, nigga. You can't say what you go do to me, and you have that body size. <laughs> and you're telling me what you go do. That's what made me say, nigga, and I hit you in your motherfucking head. Because I was taught, as far back as I can remember, learning right from wrong, my mother always said, if you can't beat somebody up, you pick something up and you hit them in the head with it. I've been hearing that since I was a kid. <laughs> so we, yeah, had- we was taught that. So that's my first reaction. Most niggas want to fight. My first reaction is to grab something and hit you with it. So whenever I'm fighting, my reaction is to use a weapon. Never to have a fist fight. Never. My, none of my fights are never thought out to, with fists. There's always a weapon involved because I was taught that as a kid. You pick up something and hit him in the head with it. That was drilled in us as kids. You pick up something and hit him in the head with it. So that's my natural reaction is to have a weapon. As you see Dewberry hop off stage, does that entice you to actually go further into this? Like throw uh-uh. this fire apart? You was already on. Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, I was wrong in the motherfucker to go further because my nigga done jumped in the danger mm-hmm. and he out there by himself. So if I hit this nigga with this, they get to get my nigga. Mm-hmm. So that don't entice me to go further. Mm-hmm. I just thought to myself, uh, nigga, I'm going to take care of little aunt. Uh, make sure my... <laughs> yeah, make, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take care of little aunt. Uh, nigga, we going to get my nigga a good casket. Uh, mama and them gonna be all right. Maplewood, God but nigga, God, nigga, uh, yeah, 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 nigga, we, we, yeah, this, yeah, nigga, we all the way in. Yeah, we all the way in. How far into picking up the pot did you know you was gonna throw it? Like had that already? Because sometimes when I be in the mode, like once I pick this bitch, it's already done. Like I'm already deciding what uh, I'm gonna do uh, to it. I, I would go put it back down. Uh, and, and to that nigga play like he would go come on stage. Now, I know he playing. Mm -hmm. I know this nigga really don't want to come on the stage. Mm -hmm. But he's saying things that I can take serious if I want to. It's just like a cop, my nigga. He kind of looking at you and know that's a toy gun. But if you pointed at him, he gonna shoot and play like it was a real gun. Even though you playing. You playing like it's a real gun. The cop know you a bullshit nigga playing, but he still kill you anyway. So that was my mindset. I know this bitch ass nigga just really doing this for show. Come on. He re- I know he doing because he, he flinched and this woman grabbed him. And he tried to push her out the way. I took advantage of the fact that he lunged at me by pushing this woman out the way. And I knew he was playing. So since you playing, bitch ass nigga, let's play, nigga. <laughs> bitch ass nigga, let's go viral. Shit. Yeah. Shit. I know he playing, homie. I know he really not trying to get to me. But he done ruined my comedy show. And I can't fix it. So fuck it. So let's break the rest of the shit. So the the pocket's thrown, the pocket's thrown, it connects. I but couldn't the, recover in my comedy show, so yeah, this, I just but, said, fuck it. So the microphone follows. Oh, uh, well. And mind you, you connected well, to the speaker, so we hear all the little. Oh, well. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, I saw he was dazed from, from the pot, because I hit that nigga good. Uh, I saw neither him nor Dewberry could just jump straight back on the stage and get in. <laughs> Both them niggas was stripping. Dewberry a sagging motherfucker, boy. That nigga sagging my, like my, a bitch. My nigga had to jump up backwards like this. <laughs> he had to jump up backwards like that. <laughs> that nigga there pulled himself up on stage. Oh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, listen. So I was waiting. I said, bitch, I was saying to myself, man, I'm finna hit this whole ass. That's why I was waiting. I've timed it perfect. Uh, Cause I knew he was bullshitting, homie. Uh, so I'm gonna bullshit with him. Damn. Uh, but I'm gonna use weapons. <laughs> like you- uh, nah, homie, they, uh, homie, I'm a cool little nigga. 
Yeah. Oh, but nigga, I'm gonna fool you go to fucking with me. I'm not, no, homie, you, you have to really hurt me if you go to fucking with me. If you argue with me and you the type of nigga who can't argue, you have to beat me up because of my mouth. Uh, so yeah, you, you really got to fucking with me. You have to hurt me because I'm going to hurt you for fucking with me. Uh, and I was trying to hurt that nigga. Yeah, that, that I didn't give a damn. Listen, I didn't give a damn by getting beat up. I want to hurt that nigga because he was fucking with me for no, for no reason. So I was so focused on that nigga. I ain't see nephew running. Uh, so yeah, because I want to hurt that nigga, homie. So he was really gonna get hurt. Had ne- I would go, nigga, that trip was gonna hurt him next. Yeah, yeah before nephew, the, the, the microphone connected. That nigga Rook said, like, yeah, hey, yeah, like yeah. That, that microphone, like it, it sounded yeah, like yeah. it connected. Yeah, yeah. And then that required a nigga to, all right, let me hop up on stage. I seen Dewberry got back up there, and then you grabbed the chair. And uh, now, 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 now is now was Montgomery, Montgomery, Alabama. Now uh, we. No, 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 nigga. Uh, this Iceman King Parson, <laughs> uh, Devon Eric. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, uh, nah, nigga, the uh, the junk, the junkyard dog. I done went back to the old wrestling. The <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I done went back to the old wrestling in, in my mind. Uh, and I had a knife in my pocket, but but because I no longer. Uh. Because I no longer have that revolutionary tactical mind, uh, I never thought to grab the knife. They let me know I'm slipping. I never thought to grab my knife. I could have easily tow some shit up up on that stage. But because I've been having fun, going to strip clubs, eating out, traveling, living a celebrity life, I never thought. So I'm not a dangerous guy anymore. Yeah, I used to be a little dangerous little motherfucker. Yeah, I ain't been going to the gun range. Uh, yeah, I ain't been breaking my guns down no more. Uh, That's just a problem. Another, okay. Another problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so, 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 yeah, homie. So, uh, so, so that I, I, I even learned something, homie. Uh, nigga, I never thought to grab my knife. I could easily get up off me, bitch, ass nigga. Hold up. But do you really want to do that? Goddamn right, I want to do it to another. <laughs> Hell yeah, nigga, I want a free kill on one of these niggas. Hell yeah, I want to do that. Nigga, bother me for nothing. You trying to hurt me mm-hmm. for what I say? Yeah, I want to do that, nigga. Hell yeah, nigga. Hell yeah, I, I want to do I get it. it. Now, would you have had the inclination to uh, hit the wife with something had she got on, the girlfriend with something had she got on the stage? Uh, I, uh, uh, if I had to re over and do it again, I would have hit that bitch with the flower pot just to oh, go even more viral. <laughs> I think that was, I think that would have made more for a viral sensation had I hit the bitch with the flower pot, God hit damn. the nigga with the microphone, <laughs> and then catch nephew with the chill as he coming across. That's oh, the shit. ideal situation in my mind. Straight straight Mario Kart, nigga. Th- yeah, yeah, because they, 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 they all three was together. Yeah. Shit. And did and didn't none of them check each other. Man, chill. You need man, just listen. Three bro. combo piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the nigga should have got the bitch should have got the flower pot. The nigga should have got the microphone. And, and nephew Odom should have got the chair. Now, as a curiosity, if you had your old utility belt from your old comedy shows, as far as everything you bring normally in your comedy shows, which one would you have grabbed just to de-escalate that situation? Like, nigga, don't make me like what? What? Because you have you. It's all part of your show. What would you yeah, have grabbed? That motherfucking pig poke. I was just standing up there, that goddamn pig poking with that motherfucker. Said, nigga, what's up, nigga? That pig poke intimidating by itself. That's a motherfucker. But boy, that motherfucking bar spray. <laughs> <laughs> that got boy, some boy, that motherfucking bar spray. Cause normally, y'all done seen the show. Normally, I sit it right there, sit it right there, have the ninja stars right there. Uh, so normally, I have that shit. And in the beginning, I strategically was using those props for that situation. God damn. That's why, I, that's why I would start out with all those weapons. Damn. For one, it was an intimidating psychological factor that it, it would use. So I was using it psychological intimidation. Uh, Works. On top of just in case I have to use these, I got them on standby. But the more I started getting into the gift of comedy and trying to understand stand-up comedy, I removed those crutches as well as I removed that thought of self-defense on stage. Aren't you, aren't you worried about bystanders getting hit with the bear maze? Like, you don't hit the first row uh, of the crowd? Uh, I, I, when, when, when my life is in danger, no one else's safety is my concern. I hear you. When my I life is in danger, because for one, my life shouldn't be in danger, and no one else is. Right. Yeah, we're going to talk, talk about the security of this plot, but let's go and go, let's go, let's keep walking through it. Um, uh, you know, we talked to Dewberry, and he said, um, you know, as he got back on stage, he's focused on Kobe Bryant. 
And some nigga Everybody focused on Kobe yeah, Everybody Bryant. But some nigga come out of left field Lamar Odom Do you see this? Yeah Lamar Odom Do you see Lamar coming out of left field? Uh uh-uh. uh I only got, I only got yeah, are you focused on Kobe? Yeah. Ah, oh, shit. Because, because, because Kobe is the threat that's proceeding toward me. He's the initial threat. Lamar Odom done went to the side. He coming, he coming down the baseline. Goddamn. <laughs> yeah, he coming from the baseline. Uh, as he's running toward us, uh, it looked like he running at Dewberry. It looked like he running toward Dewberry, and he run past Dewberry and hit me. Oh, uh, so let's talk about it, Charles, because you know, again, you're not you're not in your twenties no more. You know, to get again, it's been a while since so nigga just randomly just you know Goldberg a nigga and spear ta- spear a nigga. Like seriously, for you not seeing this coming, and sometimes you normally have the time to brace for like, oh shit, let me brace for it. You focus on Kobe, Lamar coming across. Did you get time to brace for the for whatever that whatever that was? No, uh, uh-uh. uh. <laughs> you ever seen the quarterback? Goddamn, he get ready to throw that yeah, ball. Yeah, don't the blind side. Oh, <laughs> blind side. He don't even know. That, that would happen. <laughs> blind yeah, that, side. That would happen. And boy, and boy, let me just say this. It seemed like it took forever to hit that ground. Oh shit. Boy, it seemed like me and that nigga fell off a cliff and we were just falling and falling and falling. And for it seemed like, and boy, all I could think about is, boy, what you gonna do when you hit that ground? Then the money came out. And I stopped thinking about what I was gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh. Shit. So uh yeah, when I hit that ground, home, I had to get, I had to, I had to immediately figure out a way uh to not stay there. Because I gotta keep, I gotta find that money. So wait, wait, wait. Was the money in your hand or was it in it your pocket? Yeah, if, if I fumbled the ball. Oh shit. And, and then it, 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 was, it, was, it was behind a line of scrimmage and I hadn't came through with the forward pass, so it was considered a fumble. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now this is some real diggy shit right here. This nigga said, as he's getting tackled, my motherfucking money. <laughs> what yeah. about this other shit? Where my pay? Yeah, oh. Oh, uh, yeah, nigga. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was discombobulated when I came up off the floor, but somehow, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I ain't have my sense of direction. You don't know which way is north, south, east, or west. I just know to look for that money. Uh, and that nigga was choking me. And I wanted to start hollering, do better get this nigga off me. <laughs> but I couldn't. I couldn't say nothing. Uh, so yeah, homie, uh, that shit happening so fast, uh, niggas just trying not to panic. So niggas start choking versus start doing anything, just- Yeah, he poked me. He wasn't doing nothing, he just holding on to me. Oh, like like somebody else grab, somebody else get him. He just holding on. Shit. He's, you know, you know how the big niggas do try to choke you out when they can't fight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He good, just trying to choke. Good wrestling nigga. nigga. But but and, and it feel like he choking me because I got my chin chucked and he pulling hard. He, he pulling hard. So he feel like he choking me until Dewberry hit him in the mouth. Oh yeah, oh shit, yeah, we heard her. Yeah, yeah, until Dewberry split in my album. That's how that's how he let me go. So that, I got up immediately, homie, when I fell on the ground. I got up, I actually fell on top of him. That's how I got up before almost before he did. That's what big dude said. Y'all was a little, little roll around. Yeah. Happened. See, I fell on top of him, homie. So if you go look at that steel footage, I fell on top. I was on top. I immediately got up and he tried to grab my head, trying to pull. He grabbed. So he got me from that way at this angle. Holding my head. God damn. Uh, were you not worried about your chain? Like, I know the money, but. Give a damn about that chain. Okay, nigga. That's what okay. I put insurance on it for. I want that <laughs> money. Ain't no insurance on that money. Yeah, ain't no insurance on that cash. <laughs> on that cash money, god damn. Nigga, nigga didn't believe yeah, in sale, yeah. nigga? What the fuck? Yeah, ain't no, ain't no, no insurance. Oh, uh, uh, homie, when you doing back end money, nigga, ain't no sale, nigga, when they <laughs> went. went. Uh, see, see, here, see, here's the thing about back end. Homie, when you're doing real big events with these kind of promoters, nigga, most of the money they feel to pay you from the back end is the dough money. That's facts. Not the online money, it's the dough money, the VIP money, the 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 the, the bar money. So nigga, you gonna have five, they gonna try not to give you the one, fives, and tens. They gonna try not to, but shit, nigga, you gonna have a you gonna have a you gonna have a bankroll. Uh your front end might be a chick, your front end might be Zell. Uh 
But nigga, why you, that's why you be seeing them rappers coming from them shows and back in, they got a hundred thousand dollars, seventy thousand dollars. Sometimes how you gotta take it. So I have to ask, as you're, you know, you know, kind of getting gathering what's going on, the money, shit, Charleston, um, it seems on camera, some guys ran backstage. Like the, the Kobe Bryant finally got backstage. We seen some hands throwing, like like somebody, somebody's punching somebody. Uh, only two people came on stage to fight was Lakers jerseys. The other people you seen, uh, nobody else was throwing punches because everybody was attacking Lakers jerseys. So I wasn't getting attacked. Lakers jersey then was being attacked. And they wasn't being attacked. They was being restrained and contained. Okay. So uh, once I got tackled, homie, nobody threw a, uh, nobody threw a punch. What y'all seen Kobe Bryant was doing was trying to get in. We seen some, yeah, we it, seen it, the elbows it, flying. It, it looked like he was doing this. Yeah, he, that is easy shit. But homie, he wasn't even nowhere in arm reach or reaching nobody. <sighs> Remember this, homie. We all know the cameras is going. So I'm showing out, they showing out. Yeah. We all putting on for the camera. God damn. Except the people from Crockett. The people from Crockett are the ones that bum rushing the stage to try to stop this shit. And those are the people in the white shirts. Yeah, there's a man with a cowboy hat, white shirt. One of the like, one, 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 one. man, he looked like Walker Texas Ranger, goddamn. One, one, one of the promoters. Okay, yeah, yeah. He he did his goddamn thing. I don't know who he was, but he jumped. So quickly. so so when Kobe Bryant come up there to throw a punch, they restrained him. <laughs> nah, for real. When Dewberry hit that nigga and I jump up to start throwing punches, police got me. So nigga is so what y'all see backstage, uh, it was stopped immediately. It was nothing else. Once it got back, once I hit that ground and jumped right up, it was stopped immediately. All right, let's go and go through there, man. So, all right. The world sees this. I'm sure Barack Obama watching. Like, oh, shit, my yeah, nigga yeah, Charleston. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the world is saying, like, why wasn't security secured? Why didn't you go to this venue at your level of fame with security? And why didn't the venue have security on stage waiting to see just in case? Because you're still Charleston White out in Crockett, Texas. Why weren't you questioning where is the venue security? even outside, outside of your own? Uh, yeah, I think I'm bad. He's <laughs> a bad motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm a bad little old bitty nigga, uh, and ain't nobody gonna do nothing to me, and I don't need no motherfucking security, and ain't nobody gonna do a motherfucking thing to me. Ain't nobody done nothing to me. They don't do a motherfucking thing to me. I ain't done nothing to nobody for nobody to do nothing to me. So in my mind, I don't need no motherfucking security, homie. Uh, why the venue didn't have security? Uh, because this is something they do every year, and it's never a problem. This is something they do in their town amongst their people, and it's never a problem. Charleston White have done 57 comedy shows. It's never been a problem. So why would we expect this? Uh, DJ Academics had chimed in. Uh, he mentioned Dewberry like, man, uh, uh, technically when you have your partners there, and your partners are there trying to, you know, handle business. You know, Dewberry did what he's supposed to do for his partner. But, of course, when you have your partners there, you kind of see, like, man, a lax of security. It, the, technically, dude wouldn't even got to walk up to the stage. If, let's say, the right security is there. And I, mind you, I've seen you have venues with security before. I've seen you uh, with security. Does this change your mindset going forward as far as uh, shows uh, going uh, forward? That's when I was tactical. I stopped being tactical. Uh, nigga, my mind don't need security, nigga. Uh, so I have people that recommend security to me. So every now and then I be like, yeah, yeah, I do, I do it, I do it uh, for their concern. Uh, but my mind, nigga, I ain't concerned about no motherfucking security, homie, because I ain't done nothing to nobody. Uh, and I don't know how big I am. Yeah, I don't know how big I am or how big people perceive me to be. Uh, my, my homeboy, my homeboy, uh, he, he ain't my security. Uh, nigga, we want to live. And we'll kill to live, my nigga. So uh, that's our concept. So uh, 
Would it be wise to get security? Yeah. Uh, going forward, will I have security? Yeah. Uh, but up until now, nigga, I ain't first see no security. Nigga ain't hit me in my mouth. Nigga ain't shot up my car. Nigga ain't done nothing to me. I done something to that nigga. He didn't do nothing to me. They didn't run on stage and get me. He wasn't trying to get on stage. I forced his hand to have to come up here. After I hit him with the flower plant, what was he supposed to do? Not get on stage? So nigga, didn't nobody come do nothing to me on stage. Nigga, nigga was heckling me in the crowd and got hit upside his goddamn head for heckling me, and I wanted to go viral. What do you feel like you did to that nigga's pride? Crushed it. God. Who, you don't see him running no victory laps. I'm the only nigga on the internet running victory laps. <laughs> yeah, I got them. I'm the only nigga running victory laps saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody else, so grim nigga quiet. You reposted his video. Talking to you, know, you you gave him the light to show like, hey, let me show y'all who this. Well, guy. I've been asking him to show his mouth since Dewberry hit him in the mouth. I've been asking him to come talk on the camera and show his mouth. I'm showing me after I got it because I'm letting everybody know, nigga, I didn't get it. I gave it. I didn't take one punch. I didn't receive one blow. I gave it. They didn't run up on stage. He stood up, made some threats. I know they were some dry, empty threats, but they still threats, and you can't make threats. You made a bullshit move, like you were gonna push your girl out the way. I know you wasn't trying to do that, but since you made that move, I took advantage of the fact that you made a move and cracked you. Have you ever lost a fight? Hell yeah, I have. Nigga, I got into a fight with Big Troy one time. I was fucking his wife. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, you can't go with that kind of fight. Oh. Uh, that's yeah, a different type of strength. Yeah, yeah I, I was fucking his wife, homie. Uh, and they had this club called Me at Point. And uh, uh, me and her were playing like she didn't have no husband. Like I was her real boyfriend, and I'm mine. Uh, so we at the club fighting. And I had two more girls who were with me named Chawana and Janae. Uh, they were the pretty group bras in school. Uh, so uh, somehow... Uh, she she snatched their keys and threw them or something. And uh, boy, after the club, this is why I really don't drink and get drunk. Uh, after the club, I said, well, let's go get this motherfucking key. Let's go to her house where her husband is. And he a big time drug dealer at the time. A uh, well known nigga out of Stop Six. Uh, uh, and he a damn fool. So we, 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 go, we, go, we go to their house. She, she wasn't there yet. I'm in the car drunk, playing drunk or whatever, but I'm drunk. Man, all of a sudden I hear her voice and I wake up and come out the car, yeah, bitch. And I run, I, listen, I run and jump on the back of her car, kicking the windshield while her husband and all them niggas from Stop Six, all them old blood niggas from Stop Six, Doohickey and them was over there, all them niggas was over there. That nigga went upstairs and got his pistol. So now this time, they, they done called and said, man, that nigga Blue went over there with Troy and them tripping. And everybody know this nigga a fool. Uh, so he go upstairs and get his pistol and come back down. The nigga Doohickey tell him, Troy, you ain't got to shoot that nigga. You can whoop that little old nigga. Uh, he a big nigga too. Uh, just two things stopped me. I, I don't drink to get drunk, and I stopped sagging my pants after this night. I should tell you why I stopped sagging. So as he coming to me, my niggas now, my stepbrothers now, they trying to put me in the car because they half-ass scared of this nigga, and they don't want no trouble with these gangbangers. When I'm fresh out the boys' home, out of TYC, so I still got a habit of seeing cuz and all that type of shit. So I'm over here, man, fuck them nigga cuz. So I done went to set tripping with these niggas. <laughs> so, so listen, so these niggas scared. These ain't, the niggas that with me ain't no gangbanger nigga. They half ass scared. Boy, they trying to put me in the car. Boy, Big Troy get close to me. I say, what's up, bitch ass nigga? And I try to take two steps back and weave a punch. And my pants fell down around my ankles. Boy, I fell flat back on my back. Boy, that big old nigga grabbed me by my motherfucking legs. Come on, nigga. Pulled me to me and got on top of me 
and it started raining down punches. <laughs> I'm talking about raining down punches. Boy, I remember looking up at that big nigga. <laughs> You pants still second record? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I'm, boy, I'm down there. I ain't got no shirt on. <laughs> them pants down there around the Michael. And he's straddling me, raining down punches. <laughs> boy, I'm trying to right now punch it. I'm saying, get this nigga off me. And I'm saying, this nigga hit like a bitch. Pow. <laughs> nigga hit like pow. That nigga got so mad. He tried to put his fang. He tried to figure find which one with my good eye and put it out. Then he tried to put his fangs in my eye. <laughs> Say, listen, the chick that I was messing with, she said, Troy, you don't have to do him like that. That's what stopped. He got up and said, bitch, what? And slapped the shit out of her. <laughs> <laughs> Kiss your mother. She saved you. Saved my motherfucking life. This is she is. She can say, I love her to death right now today. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, Troy, you don't have to do it. I'm like, that nigga, bitch, what? Jump right up. And she said, so, uh, so, uh, so, yeah, I lost that fight. Yeah, yeah, I was about 21, 22 years old. So after that, I don't drink to get drunk and I don't sag my pants no more. You saw when that nigga ran by Dewberry, Dewberry had to pull his pants up and he couldn't react. <laughs> that was a delay. So, yeah. so, 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 yeah, now, nah, homie, so, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I done lost a couple fights throughout life, but I ain't never been beat up. Other than that night, when Big Troy beat me up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so I haven't had no humbling or uh, ass whooping, one of them ass whooping to make you think where you stop being cocky. I hadn't had no ass whooping. I hadn't had nothing to happen to me where it'll take my arrogance of shit talking. Uh, and that's what people want to do to me. They want to take my arrogance away. Mm. Uh, they wanted to do it to Ali. Uh, they wanted to do it to Mayweather. Uh, they wanted to do it to Kobe. They wanted to do it to Jordan. The, it's the arrogance, homie. Yeah, that's right. And I'm glad you said that because um, the Cam Newton interview, it really sell. And I watched the whole thing. And I don't, I don't really watch interviews, but it really seemed like he was. Out to disprove he was your character. He was. Uh, he 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 was out to big dog me. Uh, and he hadn't really done a, a, any real extensive research on, on me. So he, he he had done a little research, but it wasn't extensive. Uh, he he got an older cousin who who was a big fan of mine, who kind of hipped him to me. You know what I'm saying? So. Uh, yeah, he yeah they were trying. He he was go big dog me. Oh, uh, that's why he would say things like, "I'm a moron," and I said, "Nah, I'm an oxymoron." So uh, uh, that's why it looked like me and him were dancing like this. Yeah. Just going, we, we 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 never we never was in sync uh, until toward the end. So 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 what I did, homie, is uh, I I, I allowed myself to be vulnerable. Uh, so, so I didn't use the character to deflect. Uh, I, I allowed myself to be vulnerable. I answered every question. Uh, he, he, he allowed me to elaborate and go in great detail on things I've said. So, so people got to see the man outside of the character. And, and that's hardly ever, ever seen and done on the internet. Charles, I have to ask you, um, uh, when D.L. Hewley respond to the situation that just happened, um, you got DL's attention. Well, you had his attention before, but yeah, that bitch ass nigga been hating on me. My yeah, nigga. yeah, yeah. So he try, He seemed like he was waiting to chime in on this one. Uh, well, he right. I ain't no comedian. It, uh, I'm an entertainer. I can do comedian stand up. Uh, I can do internet. I can do movies. Uh, you put me in front of a camera, homie, and I entertain. So he's trying to put me in a box and saying I'm disrespecting the crowd. No, I'm not disrespecting the crowd. I'm the new comedian that'll kick your ass if you heckle me too long or we end up fighting. Yeah, no, cause I I'm the comedian that'll hit you across your motherfucking head, nigga. You heckling me too motherfucking long. Somebody get this nigga. Why is this nigga in here for? Why ain't nobody got him out of here? So I'm that nigga. And nigga, if you come and try to skirt me, nigga, you can't unskirt me. Uh, nigga, I'm on attack. Yeah, we live in a post uh, Will Smith slap era to where how close, this is for all comedians coming up. How close do you let a nigga get to talking and coming up to you before a nigga do something? Like, how, yeah. How, once a nigga, once a nigga threatening you, once a nigga voices loud and y'all argue and he proceeding toward you, attack. 
<laughs> you don't. You, you first, don't. I last. Guys. Listen, homie. Yo, w- w- there are signs. There are warning signs to let me know that you possibly want to hurt me. Your voice don't went up. Your angry expressions. Your body language. Your body tone. Your movements. Once you proceed toward me, and we're not in a friendly or favorable state, then I can only assume that you are trying to attack me. Why are you proceeding toward me? So I'm going to attack. You don't let no nigga get up in no arms, this and no arm read. You attack, homie. Come on now. Um, I have to ask you, uh, what did you yourself learn from this whole scenario? Uh, it was a long car ride home. Well, not long. Let's just say you got back to Dallas for work safely, unscathed. Uh, you had time to think about it, you know, a day or two. What did you personally learn from this scenario as far as what to do going forward, how to how to handle hecklers, how to, you know, what what did you learn to move forward in this scenario? Uh, the black people the black people will wipe each other out. Uh, I'm saying so. Before we die out, so we're 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 not we're not we're not gonna die off. We're gonna kill each other off. So that's what I learned. Number one. Uh, the the second thing I learned is uh, I need to do what Deion Sanders did. Uh, so that's why you see me back. Uh, in dealings with, with Aiden Ross and Kit. Uh, I learned that it's best to sell out, that you can't save black people. Uh, I learned that I owe Deion Sanders an apology. Best thing he ever did was leave Jackson State and go to Colorado and run to the arms of them white people so his kids can be safe, his property can be protected, and he can get the money that he so deserves for being a black coach, coaching for white people. The money that he deserves for being their coach. Because they'll never give him what he deserves, but he do deserve something for working for them. So uh, I learned that uh, I don't want to be down. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to be down. Uh, okay. I think it's I think it's almost wise and smart if you're a black person uh, to sell out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I learned, homie. Right, when, when well. I when I come back home and look at everything, I say, you know what? Had I took that deal with them white folks, none of this shit would have happened because the white people would have made sure I was protected there. That is facts. The white people would have made sure that the 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 the, the reputation of the, the event would have stayed intact. That is facts. Uh, so I'm letting white people know I'm I'm ready to sell out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You're gonna upset some people saying. Uh if y'all want me to book, if y'all get a dress, get a small. <laughs> oh shit no. No shit. Oh. <laughs> uh I wear eight eight size shoes, so I don't know if the heels run small or big, but I wear a size eight man. Uh <laughs> not, 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 not. <laughs> this wouldn't that wouldn't happen if I were white people. Oh man. None of that would have happened if I were white people. So it's best to go be with white people. So you can, so you can, so you can, so you can prosper, and right. be progressive, because that I don't be- see, I don't see too many black people being prosper and, and progressive, just dealing with black people. All right. With that being said, uh, uh, Charles, appreciate you for responding to that scenario right there. It's a, a black end. You came home on scale. Shout out, Dewberry, Big Dewberry. Uh, hold on. I have to ask, would you, would you go back uh, to Crockett, Texas? To- <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I would. Uh, I'm offering to come back and do a free show. Oh, that's, uh, that's actually a good uh, consolation prize. Yeah, yeah, I'm offering to come back and do a free show. 
the flower pot show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I want to I wanna right my wrong when I, when I know I'm wrong. Okay, okay. When I know I'm wrong. That's yeah, yeah, I got to know I'm wrong, though. Man, Charleston, you were, hey, again, people saying, man, you were real when you stood on business. Uh, God damn it. A lot yeah, of comedians uh, wouldn't have did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had said I wasn't coming back on here no more. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, for, because of the Twisted Black shit. Yeah. Uh, Twisted Black don't know me. Uh, he's never met me a day before in, 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 in life. So uh, for him to be interviewed on his podcast and the title reads as if he know me, this man don't never, he ain't never met me. Twisted Black was in prison the entire 12 years. I was in the community working, so he knows nothing about the, he know nothing about me. Uh, he's a guy who I watched in the city who I see as one of the biggest losers in the city because he's celebrated every time he's come home from prison. But they can't support him to get him where I'm at. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Oh, uh, yeah. Nigga, he have, he, he, he's been to prison four times. And he's had four welcome home parties. Uh, he's abandoned his children on four different occasions. His wife left him. His mother died. So all of these elements have gone along with him while in prison for people to come celebrate him. And then for him to get on here and say, I ain't never been nobody. Homie, while you was gone in prison, I was a PTA dad. I was something. I was a present father. A single dad. So, uh, you know, while you was uh, rapping your way in the prison, uh, I was studying law at Texas Wesleyan University, creating one of the most highly recommended youth organizations and youth programs in the state of Texas, which was recommended to all 254 counties throughout the state of Texas, a youth organization that was called Hyped About Hype Youth Outreach. Uh, I've been having gold teeth in my mouth for over 20 years. That's something we do in the South because it's a Southern heritage. It goes all the way back to slavery because the free slaves wore gold teeth in their mouth. So our grandmothers have them, our grandfathers have them. So that's just something we have down South. He from Detroit, he don't know that. Uh, he sold dope in the black community, but I've never sold dope in the black community. I've never sold dope to a black person. Uh, I've never kicked a black man in the head ever in life. I've never stomped out a black man, never. Uh, I've never shot a gun at a black man. I've never, I've never fired a bullet at a black man. Never. Yeah. Never, homie. Uh, I'm not known for me treating black girls. I don't have a bunch of black babies spread out throughout the black community in black village. I protected my seeds. Uh, I'm married to a black woman. Uh, I didn't, I didn't marry outside the race. I had kids outside the race and married the mother of my children so I wouldn't have bastard babies. So what he's comparing himself to, uh, homie, these niggas can't compare to me. Yeah. Uh, my children don't know what it's like not to have their father when they've had a father. I'm gonna say it again. My children do not know what it's like not to have their father when they had a father. One of the most horrible things a kid can do is to know their father and not have access to their father because you need him way more when you gotta go without him when you know him. That'll make sense later. Now we we gonna touch on it, but with that being said, uh, uh, we gonna we gonna stop it right there. We are gonna take a little break. Uh, Charleston White responds to the Crocker Texas thing. Like he said, he will go back to Crocker. He will do. His yeah, thing. I, yeah, I'm coming to do a free show, my nigga. Uh, and and, and 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 I'm doing that because the 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 people uh deserve that because homie they came out, they dressed up. Uh, it was a great event. We we was laughing up until that point. Uh, and the professionalism of the promoters in the fitted hat cowboys, uh, it warrants it. So, uh, yeah, I owe that to them people. All right, well, let's do it like that, man. Charles to wind the building, man. You understand, man. Real life, three stars. Let's go. We are. Shout out, real life, three stars, nigga. Move. Hey.